So guys, I announced it in my other videos. Um, here comes the fight. And this is part of my what a mess series about the Reykjanes Peninsula. I don't even know what part it is. Is it part five? Um, now they're fighting about what is happening to the Reykjanes Peninsula. And uh, Kristen Johns Dottir, she is the director of natural hazards at the Icelandic Meteorological Office. Um, she disagrees with interpretations of her colleagues. Uh, so what does that mean? Um, so we know that Thorvaldur Thorvaldsson and also Adaman Höskuldsson, um, they consider the recent series of earthquakes on the Reykjanes Peninsula, not only in Grindavik, on the whole Reykjanes Peninsula, a sign that the Brennesteinsfjall system is waking up. And I've shown you the systems in my previous videos, but I'll show you the map again here. So the Brennesteinsfjall system is the number five, but we've also seen earthquake in number earthquakes in number four, the Krizovic system. So the geologists and volcanologists have also reported that this system is waking up and we definitely know um, that it is waking up because we've seen already like two eruptions in the proximity of the Swartzengi area and around and inside of Grindavik. So that has definitely woken up there. And I think one thing that maybe why she is disagreeing is because especially Thorwald or Thorwaldson has said um, Reykjavik is under threat from a lava flow from the Brennesteinsfjall system. And so are they worried that this might create too much panic? Although Thorwaldur hasn't said this in a way to fearmonger or create panic, he says we need to be prepared. He didn't say I expect that to happen tomorrow, although it is possible because there was a 3.1 earthquake, a 2.9, a 2.8, another 2.8 just within the last few days. And also the Met Office has reported, yeah, there were these earthquakes, but there was not an eruption. But you know, if I read sentences like this, why would they even mention an eruption if they're so sure that there will not be an eruption, right? So kind of this told me when I read it, there could be an eruption. And that's what Thorwald or Thorwaldson has said, because in the past, because there is a lava field, you see this in yellow here on that map, and that lava has flown into Reykjavik, into the outskirts of Reykjavik in the past, like some 800 years ago. So it's proof of concept. It's not that the Thorwaldur invents this and it's just an estimate. We have proof that this is happening. So of course the earthquakes could just be because the two tectonic plates are separating from each other, but the signs are this system as a whole on the Reykjanes Peninsula is waking up and of course that tectonic movement could be part of it or could cause it. Um, but she says they're wrong basically. And is we know the officials, they're all worried about their tourism and about how bad this looks to the outside because we have the Keflavik International Airport on the Reykjanes Peninsula where all the tourists come in. The Brennesteinsfjall system has the most popular ski area, the Blue Mountain the ski area, Blafjöll ski area that's just at the doorsteps of Reykjavik. It's basically an area that the locals and the tourists are using. Then we have the Blue Lagoon that is not far away. Then in the Blindsfjall system we have some volcanic caves that people can look at, some more hot springs. So to declare a potential eruption in this area might scare people away. And can they afford to lose more tourist attractions? They're already so worried about the Blue Lagoon, how much this is costing them. But all that Thorwald or Thorwaldsen is saying, we need to prepare, we need to consider, Will we build more defense walls about critical infrastructure, about the outskirts of Reykjavik? But he also said yesterday, you should not build 
further east of Reykjavik. Do not more development or another airport because that airport would have the same hazard level as the Keflavik airport. So he is looking into the future whenever this might happen. It could happen tomorrow. It could happen in 10 years. Hopefully it will never happen. But he's realistic about this. And that's what I really like. He's not creating panic, but he tells it as it is. And I don't think that people there can put their hands, heads in the sand anymore because what we have seen in Grindavik on January 14th, it has erupted in town and it has destroyed three homes and all these fissures that are there. They're the most dangerous, like crack collapse. That's the new hazard words. And we have fissures that are going into Reykjavik and into Hafna Fjordur and into these areas. So it is a similar situation. So it would be very unwise to just ignore that and just say, ah, it's going to be fine. That's what they said about Grenavik. And look what happened. Lava did flow into town. And then they said, yeah, it's fine blue lagoon no problem let's reopen just a few days ago we heard the eruption can happen inside sword sangi because they said the magma can only flow south for so long and then it will build up and then it will flow back up north again and an eruption can happen inside sword sangi where the blue lagoon is so is she trying damage control or is this really a different opinion? Um, of course, we do not have concrete measurements that indicate a magma movement, but what the scientists are saying, how these streamers behave, there could be magma flowing underneath the existing lava field already. That's the yellow area here. So, Kristen Johns Dottier, the head of natural hazards, she does not agree with the interpretation of these series of earthquakes that have record, been recorded southeast of Heidmark last Friday, um, <clears throat> where scientists are saying they indicate the Brennestein Fjalla system is activating. So because they're are no further measurements that would indicate a magma accumulation. She is of the opinion that it is more likely that the earthquake can be attributed to movements on faults in the area. But she also does not have proof of that. So it's 50-50 in my opinion. Um, she says these earthquakes are clearly on a known fault called the Valnux fault. And this Valnux fault is probably responsible for the biggest earthquakes that have hit the Reykjanes Peninsula. Um, yeah, but as I said, do we have proof? She says that earthquakes in this area occur approximately every 50 years and the last one was in 1968 and before there there was an earthquake in this area in 1929 and they both measured around the same magnitude um yeah that could very well be but i think what she doesn't take into account this reykjanes peninsula has been dormant for 800 years and the whole peninsula is definitely waking up so we're not only talking about the earthquakes that we've seen over the weekend in that specific volcanic area in the area number five the brenstein's fjalla area we have seen the Fadragalsfjall eruptions, like three eruptions since March 2021, two eruptions and one magma intrusion in the Grindavik system already. Um, Grimsvatn, there's, there's Bardabunga, it's rumbling everywhere. So it's not that we, this, these earthquakes might be part of the whole system waking up and that would make sense as well, right? She says these earthquakes were called the Brennstein's Fjalla earthquakes at the time, but she thinks that this fault has caused the earthquakes that are located east of Brennstein's Fjall. So who is right? I don't know. We know that 
the volcanologist Thorwald of Thorwaldsen, he has said in a news article um, that was just published a few days ago that recent earthquakes could be an indication that the Brennesteins feel has become active. And he said it is important to take preventive measures against possible volcanic eruptions near the capital area as soon as possible. And I would like to hear what she has to say about that. Does she disagree with that as well? And then we have another volcanologist, Arman Höskoldson. He agreed with Thorwaldson and he said in an interview that the earthquakes were connected to the earthquakes on the Reykjanes Peninsula, in the Reykjanes volcanic system. Um, but Kristen says that it is not time to start talking about magma movements because no measurements indicate that magma has started to move under Brennestein's fuel. So, okay. She says, before we start talking about any magmatic movements, we want to see some records or signs that indicate that these are not just earthquakes. Um, okay, yes. But you know, if we just look at the last three years, almost all the earthquakes were not just earthquakes. They were leading up to eruptions, to problems, magma intrusions, cracks opening, right? So. I think this should be taken more serious because she also doesn't have valid proof for her theory and the science, it is difficult. The seismic seismologists and volcanologists, they don't know much about what's going on underneath the earth. That science is not very far progressed as far as predictions and really knowing what is going on. These big earthquakes were felt in the capital area and even as far as Grindavik. And so even though she does not think that these recent earthquakes are a sign of an eruptive unrest in the area, she says that earthquakes that are caused by plate movements on this Havalnux fault will be felt in the capital area. So it's still... Sounds to me she's trying to make this sound more harmless than it actually is. And she says there is a tremor that will be felt throughout most of the country. This is a big earthquake. If it happens, it will, of course, be felt very well in the capital area. And she notes, however, that the fault is at some distance from the capital area and that the seismic waves fade quickly in this country because the earth crust is so cracked. And Kristen believes that it is unlikely that an earthquake from this area will cause major damage to buildings. And she points out that during the earthquake in 1968, cracks appeared in school buildings in the capital area. But of course, the codes have changed since then. Um, it's all she believes, he believes, they believe, right? I think they should take this as an opportunity to take a closer look at uh, educational materials for the civil defense and to on how to build protective measurements. Because... Um, she thinks the biggest danger that comes with these earthquakes is from furniture or things inside homes that will move. And she says she encourages the people to review or study the recommendations um, of like studies for earthquake prevention and preparedness. And she says this material, it's educational material and it can be accessed on the public safety website. So what do you think, guys? How does that sound to you? Who do you believe more? Um, as we all, we're swimming in the darkness um, and I always try to observe, listen to my gut feeling and use logical thinking. And uh, in my opinion, of course, these earthquakes could be caused by the North Atlantic Rift. But if you see the whole picture, 
it is out of the question that the Reykjanes Peninsula is waking up. And this is confirmed by several experts. So I don't think she can just isolate these incidents because we have seen these kinds of earthquakes in Grimsvatn and in Bardabunga and in Grindavik. And so it's all over the Reykjanes Peninsula. If it was just that fault line, right? But it's like everywhere. So this is what concerns me. And we already have seen multiple eruptions. So I think if we only listen to her, it gives us a sense of false safety. And I agree with Thorwaldur and the other guys, and especially with Thorwaldur, that they should start immediately to look at protection measures, how to protect critical infrastructure from lava flow. And look at the areas around Reykjavik. Are they in danger of that new hazard crack collapse? That is actually the most dangerous problem that Grindavik is facing. We see the fissures that from the last eruptions that are going into Reykjavik. So could we see something like this? And there's a reason why he's advising not to get to build closer to these areas, because then these new subdivisions could face the same problem that Grindavik has, guys. So it is interesting to watch and see how this will unfold and unfortunately um, we will only know who is right when we will see an eruption or if we don't see an eruption but as the time frame can be stretched so widely um, it is hard to tell um, what we definitely know the land keeps rising underneath Svartsengi and we will see another eruption very soon in Grindavik, around Grindavik, in Swartsengi, in the Sutnukur Hagafell area, somewhere. It's going to happen. It's going to be a magma intrusion or an eruption, but they're thinking an eruption is most likely. So, guys, stay tuned. I will keep you updated about all these events, as always. And thank you so much for watching, guys. Um, Thank you so much for supporting my channel with the supers and with the coffees that you keep buying me. And uh, all I can say, check out the two videos in the end screen. And I hope to see you very, very soon on my channel. Thank you so much. Bye bye.